Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Uh, before we get into the fishing today, we're only a couple days removed from Hurricane Helene, which if anybody knows anything, man, it has destroyed Florida, Georgia, Eastern Tennessee, my home state of North Carolina and Western North Carolina. So there's so many people affected by this that's completely lost everything. So send any thoughts, prayers, whatever you believe in, do whatever you want to do with that. But there's so many people that are in need of help right now. So if you can, please do whatever you can, whether that's donating money to whatever charitable thing you believe in, whether it's supplies, whatever, man, this is, this is going to probably take years to rebuild, at least in North Carolina. So before any fishing, most important thing, thoughts and prayers to all of you that are affected by this and, uh, we'll be praying for you. All right. So now to the fishing today, we're inland a few hours. Um, we're going to do some crappy fishing or if you're from where I'm from, they're called crappie. Um, but we're starting to get into that fall pattern. We're right at the beginning of October. As you see from my videos, I don't crappy fish very often. I think it's my second time this year. I usually try to go two or three times. So the way I'm going to show you today, it's a very simple, easy way, especially like this in a kayak. You know, if you don't have the front facing sonar stuff that's out there now, you guys see me, I got a very basic fish finder. So you want to find a way to locate these fish. So we're going to do some slow trolling or drifting, depending on what you call it. And my rig's basically a double rig. So on the top, you've got a three-way swivel to an Aberdeen hook, which you can use number two or number fours. I can only find number four, so that's what I'm using. Goes down to an egg weight sinker. This one is a quarter ounce. My other rod I got going is a half ounce. And then down to a jig head. On the bottom one, you can either run another hook with a minnow or like with me, I try to do a minnow and a jig and then that way I can figure out what they're actually hitting on. So to figure out whether they're deep, they're shallow, we're just going to kind of slow cruise around and see where we can locate them. As soon as I get a bite, what I'll do since crappy school up, I'll circle that little area until they don't bite no more. And then I'll just continue to move on. So I personally think this is very simple. It's very relaxing. But it's a great way to locate fish, especially if you're like me and don't have all this fancy electronics and that type of stuff. This is a good way to do it. It might take a little bit, but once you find them, anybody that crappy fishes knows you're going to be on them. So let's get at it and um, we'll go from there. There we go, Alan. See if I can keep this feller on here. First one of the day, I'll probably screw it up. Dang, it's a good one. Where are you at, buddy? Hey, come on, man, get in here. Oh, it's a bass, that's why. Well, skunk's off the boat finally. Yeah, that's a bass. Wasn't for sure at first. Not bad. Let's see what he's sitting at. Ain't 13 and a half. First fish of the day, and it is a crappy little guy, but nonetheless, it is one. Get in here, buddy. 
Yeah, he's not going to be big enough to keep. But, like I said, it's a fish nonetheless. Alright, come here, dude. Alright, give you the first look at this guy here. Just small little guy. He's maybe eight inches or something like that. So, say you, dude. All right, we got another one on, y'all. Hey, he's a decent one. He's not bad at all. Let's get this dude in here. There we go. He might keep. Is that my spot lock? And let's get a look at this guy. Yeah, he'll keep. He choked that thing, man. Dang. There we go. Nice and easy. Here you go. He's decent size. Let's see what he's at. I don't like keeping them unless they're over 10. There's no regulations on them on the lake that I'm at. So, I mean, I can keep whatever I want. But, yeah, he's almost 11. For as slow as fishing's been, I'm going to bleed this dude out and get him on some ice. So, let's go. So now what I like to do, now that I caught one that's a good one, is I know what depth I kept that dude at, or caught that guy at. So what I'll do now is I'll just kind of circle this area. I'll set both rods to that depth. And um, let's see, is that one there? Yeah, there we go. There's another one. Well, that couldn't have worked out any better, could it? Not as I'm talking, I'm telling you what I'm doing. Let's get this guy in here. I don't think this one's going to keep. He might be. He's going to be a little small, I think. But let's check it all out and show him off to you here. Get this dude unbuttoned. There you go. Yeah, he's small, so I'm going to let this guy go, but... There you go, right as I'm talking, number two. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yep, just a little guy. But nonetheless, it's crappy, my intended target. So there you go. Bye, Felicia. All right, let's see what we're working with. It feels decent, whatever it is. What do we got? Yep, a bass. We got us a bass. And he's just a little guy at that, but as I always say, a fish is a fish, man. I'm good with whatever. Get this dude unhooked, show you off, buddy. Get you back in the water. Come on, man. Here we go. He just a little guy, maybe 12 inches, something like that. But see you, dude. All right, well, that was quick. Looks like another bass. Let's get this dude done. Oh. And there he goes. All right, show him off real quick. There you go. Just a little bass, nothing big. See you, man. All right, we're on again. What do we got? What do we got? Got a crappy. Got a crappy. Come on, man. Get in here. I finally got one. I shouldn't say finally, but. I know. Either way, if it, like you said, it always seems so long in between bites. All right. Get that dude unbutton. There you go. Give that guy a look. I think he'll keep. Yeah, he's 11. That'll work for me. Another one in the box. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I got hung up on something. All 
Oh, shoot. That's not good. There we go. One more. Find a little bit of them now. All right, dude, get in here, man. Looks like, yeah, he gonna be close. No, oh, he already came undone. I like it even better. Get all this crap out of the way first. Show them off to you here. There you go. Another decent one. Let's see what this guy's sitting at. Yeah, ten and a half. That will work for me. All right, let's see what we got. Come here, dude. Come here, dude. Yep, it's a crappy. It's a good one at that. Come here, buddy. Yeah, that's a good one there. Heck yeah, man. I think that might be the biggest one of the day so far. All right. Here we go. Yeah, look at this dude. Yeah, he definitely by far the biggest one of the day. So, heck yeah, man. That makes number four going in the box. Well, I thought I started my camera, but obviously I did not. So, here's another one I just got. He's right at 11 inches, so... This dude will make another one for the box, so let's go. All right, let's see what we're working with. Feels decent, whatever it is, probably a bass. Can't quite tell yet. Stinky catfish. Oh, joy. All right. Let me deal with this guy. All right, let's see what we're working with. This is my first one in a while. That's a little crappy. All right, come here, dude. You're just a little feller. Just a little guy, but nonetheless, I haven't caught one in a while, so I am uh, glad to find one again. Let's get you up here and show you off, bud, and then you can go back. All right, there you go. He just a little guy, nothing big at all, but thanks, dude. So when I'm fishing like this, just kind of doing the slow troll drift fishing, whatever you want to say for like crappy like this, I always try to maintain right about half a mile an hour, no more than three quarter of a mile an hour at that. Um, I want to go as slow as I can, let these fish have time to eat, whether you can see my top hook's got a minnow on it, bottom is just a jig. Um, with soft plastics, but you want to be able to put it in front of their face, let them eat. So if you're going too fast, it does not give these fish time to actually strike and eat what you're fishing with. Now with these rigs too, what I like to do is I always have minnows on top and then on the bottom I'll do either different weights or like an underspin jig head, one regular jig head, and I always run different colored soft plastics just to kind of get a feel for what's going on. If I'm starting to get fish and they're only hitting on minnows, you can quickly, you can take that soft plastic off, leave your jig head on, put your minnow on, 
your jig head like that and then just keep kind of rotating back and forth. Um, just kind of depends on what the fish are wanting that day of what I present to them. What I'll do, if you've seen, as soon as I hit a fish, I spot lock, deal with the fish, see if it's one that's big enough to keep or not. If it is, then I'll just kind of circle around in that spot for 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Usually crappies, uh, schooly fish. So usually if you can find one, you can find a couple. Um, now you've seen, I've hit it. I think I got five in the cooler. I don't know how many I've thrown back now, probably three, something like that. But I'll hit that spot, I'll find my keeper, and then I just kind of troll that area. You know, usually I've pulled about two out of each little spot, and then I once they stop biting for that 10 or 15 minutes, then I just continue on. But for people like me in a kayak, this is great for people that paddle because, you know, this is simple, easy fishing. Uh, but you know, most kayaks don't have all these fancy electronics, anything like that. So this is a great way to locate fish, um, and kind of see where they're holding up at, uh, see what type of water depth they're at. And then also in that water depth, where in that water column are they hiding at? So that way, you know, um, you can obviously buy crappy poles with line counters on them. For me, that only does this two, three times a year. I don't have that. So what I'll do to set my depth of what I want it at, I kind of figure from the bale up to about the first eyelet, probably somewhere close to two feet. So depending on how deep I want to go, I'll just rip off two feet at a time, count that, and then I know. But I always set my rigs different until I figure out what their pattern is for that day. So, you know, if your fish are holding at, say, 15 feet, I know crappy eat up, so I'm going to set all my rigs somewhere around that 14 foot mark. That way I'm just above where, where they're holding at. They can come up and eat it and everything's good to go. So hopefully these tips are good for you guys. One other tip I like to do, my buddy showed me this and I do it. So I try to pre-tie a whole bunch of rigs. That way, you know, you're fishing in a lake, you're trolling, you're always going to get hung up, you're going to break off. So instead of trying to retie on the boat, what I'll do is I'll tie up 10 rigs or something like that. I just took a pool noodle and cut it down. And then as you can see, I just wrap my rigs up in there, puts the hooks in them so I don't have to worry about hooking myself, anything else on the kayak. But that's even a great tip for my saltwater guys, the Carolina rig, you carry, you same deal. You can tie up all your Carolina rigs, put them on a pool noodle, wrap them around it, bury the hooks in it you ain't gotta worry about getting snagged up on any other equipment yourself anything like that so it's it was a great tip i try to do it with pretty much everything more so crappy crappy rigging than i do um, carolina rigs because you can tie a carolina rig pretty quick but regardless that's a great tip for you guys to have all right what do we got it took oh it hit the crap out of it but it doesn't feel all that big now but man when uh, when he hit it, man, he friggin' knocked the fire out of it. Just a little dude. Man, you'd have thought the way that he hit it was gonna be a friggin' Mondo. And <laughs> it's funny, like if uh, I was in salt water like I typically fish, this would be bait in there. <laughs> A little white perch is what this dude is. So let's get him on my button, show him off here. Yeah, I can thumb that dude. There you go. That's what a white perch looks like. They do get bigger. I hear they're good to eat, but obviously that dude's way too small to keep, but fish nonetheless. All right, see what we got. I just rebaiting my other line. And uh, this line was just sitting in the water. Dang, these white perch are right here, all in this spot. Yeah, I might have to, I might have to keep on moving because I don't want to catch a whole mess of these guys. But it'd be all right if they was bigger, but they're not. So, you know, um, well, man, give it up here, buddy. There we go. All right, bye, Felicia. All right. Ooh, that's a stud crappy there. Oh, dang, that's a good one. I'm, I'm netting this feller. 
Get in here, dude. Come on, man. Come on. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Here we go. Dang, it's been a minute since I caught a crappy in it, that. This is a good one. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right here. Oh, oh you ain't wiggling away from me, man. All right, I got a mess. All right, here you go. There's a stud crappy right there. All right, now that I got my mess all cleaned up, let's see what this dude's coming in at. 12 and a quarter, so. Nice one, man. I think he's the biggest one of the day so far, but it's gonna make one more to go into the box. So let's get him bled out, put on ice. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Little crappy. So I've caught this afternoon, it's just been these little guys, man. It is, um, this bite's been a struggle. I'm still getting them, but there, none of them are big enough to keep, that's for sure, so. It is what it is, but there you go. He's just a tiny little dude, so. See you, man. Yeah, there you go. Feels like a decent fish. Let's see what we got. Be a crappy one time. Be a crappy. Can't tell. Look, decent size, whatever it was, though. Oh yeah, that's a crappy. Heck yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Get in here, buddy. No, come on, come on. Don't get off, don't get off. Oh, that was dumb doing a boat flip, but it worked. I'll take it. Uh -oh. Heck yeah, man. And a good keeper at that. That is what I am talking about. Come here, man. Give it up. All right, look at that. That one's a freaking stud, man. I'm pretty sure this one will be the biggest of the day. Let's see what we're working with here. Yeah, heck, he's almost 14, man. That thing is a slab. That's what I'm talking about. I love it, man. I love it. You just heard me yell, oh, crap. I was turning the camera off, and then this little dude hit. <laughs> there we go. Went from that great big one to that guy. Let's compare the two here real quick, just to show show you for reference the size difference in these two i mean look at that right there that dude is a stud that's a little dink see you man i appreciate it though all right y'all well that's gonna wrap it up hopefully you guys liked my crappy how-to type video i guess um, i'm gonna try to be better in my any videos i have coming up of why and what i'm doing so hopefully it will help some people learn Obviously, I'm not the best fisherman, but I can give you some tips and tricks of what actually gets me on fish. So let me know if you like this. Leave me a thumbs up, a comment down below, or do I just need to stick to saltwater fishing? So let me know what you think. This will be, um, I don't have too many more videos left to make for the year, so I'm trying my best to get as many out as what I can. So um, like, share, subscribe, comment. You know, all that BS mess. So just remember, until the next one, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice.